All right, welcome to Urban Economics. So we're gonna start with just like an introductory lecture, looking at all the interesting things about cities, all the weird things that happen, all the weird facts about cities. So first of all, just what is urban economics? Well, we're really studying the characteristics of, uh, of urban areas. And if you get really, really into urban, you'll need to know some kind of uh, like GIS type software, like learning how to uh, you know, do maps and kind of marry data with, uh, with geography, all right? And so re there really is a lot of geography when you get deep into uh, urban economics. So it's a mixture of these kind of two fields of geography um, and, uh, and, and uh, economics. So our first observation, which may seem obvious, is that the majority of our economic activity is concentrated in cities. People, people are there and all the economic activity is, is there, which, okay, may seem obvious, but this was not always the case. You know, if you go back before the Industrial Revolution, everything is concentrated in the rural areas. You know, it's an agrarian-based uh, economy, and that's really what, what was going on. And so it's kind of actually interesting. It's, it reflects how productive our agricultural sector is in that we can all have all this concentration of people in cities. And this is where, you know, all the economic action is. So you think, well, why is this? Like, what is the advantage that the city you know, has to offer? Why is it that people need to be um, near each other to produce this, this economic activity? And why do they want to be near each other? And furthermore, this trend is just uh, increasing. So this is the percent of the US population that lives in urban areas. And you can see that it's just going up and up um, and up. Okay, and then this is the urban population at urban as a urban population as a percentage of the population. So what percentage of the population lives in an urban area? If I were to select somebody at random, what is the chance that they would live in um, an urban area? And again, you can see these trends going upwards and upwards. North America would be this one. So you could see North America, and this is just predicted to grow and grow um, and grow. Okay, if we have this kind of, graph where the higher the peak, the more GDP per capita in a place. Um, and no, sorry, this is the total value of output. So this is the total value of what's produced. And so again, you can see this is really concentrated in cities. You know, you have the Northeastern corridor here, um, Chicago, uh, which is here, um, Atlanta down here, the Texas Triangle here. Um, and then of course your Southern California um, Northern California, and then the, uh, the Pacific Northwest. You know, these are all cities, Miami down here. So you could see, you look at the U.S., everything is really produced in the cities. This is where our economic activity is concentrated. All right, and we'll talk about why that is. What is the advantage of cities in the class? This is our first observation, and we're going to try to explain it in the class. Second observation, cities are really expensive. Okay, so this is where all the ac economic activity is. This is where all the people are, but hey, they have to pay a lot to live there. Why are they willing to pay so much to live um, in, in these cities. Now this rents at least have gone down a little bit um, with the pandemic, but in general, people still wanna live in cities and they pay a lot to live there. So here are tw two 2018 prices and you can see one bedroom apartment, San Francisco, New York, San Jose, Boston, LA, all these things are super expensive to live in, okay? This again shows your most expensive areas, which are predominantly, you know, along the West Coast here, your nice West Coast areas around New York and then DC. All right, these are Humboldt, and then here's Chicago over here, Miami, Texas Triangle again. Um, and so, you know, cities are incredibly expensive. If you're, if you're interested in the most expensive ones, of course, Silicon Valley. These are all Silicon Valley, Honolulu, New York, more Silicon Valley adjacent. <laughs> Um, the rich part of Connecticut, um, DC, and then here we have uh, LA. Okay. And then your least expensive areas are, you know, more uh, more rural areas. All right, and still metro areas, but these are more connected to rural areas, rural rural uh, rural settings rather than you know this 
the you know the high high economic activity here that's the next thing we'll talk about why is it more expensive you think well the economic activity is higher people are making more money that's going to be reflected in the prices but in many ways this is far beyond what we would expect just given the fact that people are making more money in those areas and so we'll talk about kind of the policy that leads to those really really high co costs um, in this class okay other thing we're going to observe is that Cities are producing all this economic activity. They're expensive. They have lots of things in common. You know, a city here is in many ways similar to another city there. However, they really, really actually differ in many, many keys area, key areas. So we have a wide variety of cities. And so the transportation system will be different from city to city. Why is that? You would think like, okay, we have an urban area, one transportation system. We're going to find the most efficient type. Use that over and over again. So it differs. How the government is organized. So some cities... Um, you know, some cities have kind of one city government, some many, some city areas are kind of broken into, um, separate ones. Um, so that differs from city to city density. So how, you know, how closely packed in a city is, and then how diverse it is and how segregated it is also varies city to city. Um, and so again, we're going to discuss like the effects of these and also the origins of these huge differences. Here are some examples. So here you have your London transportation network, the London tube. And here you have your LA one. And you can see the difference. This one is very, very dense, kind of get everywhere and anywhere where the LA one is much more spread out. Again, this is going to reflect the underlying density of the city. Sorry, I'm in recording this in the warehouse. So if you hear sounds, it's just just regular warehouse stuff. Um, so the LA local government, so here you have your kind of your LA metropolitan area. You know, there's this LA County, but you, the metropolitan area is roughly kind of this whole, this whole area right here. And you can see again, it's government's very weird. You have LA city, which has this, this white, this very, very strange white shape, you know? So it's like mainly up here with a few areas that have seceded like Beverly Hills, kind of your richer areas that have seceded Beverly Hills, Santa Monica. And then it has this long, long little strip that connects it to its Harbor. So very strangely organized again with lots of little um, you know, smaller cities within it compared to New York, which is, you know, has the boroughs, but it's kind of managed all together by, uh, you know, by the, by New York city. Okay. And then when it comes to segregation and, um, and density, you can see the differences in cities. So this is Charlotte. Each dot is, um, each dot I think represents a hundred people and the colors correspond to different, um, uh, different races. So the green is black. The blue is white the orange over here is hispanic and then the red is asian and so you can see this is fairly segregated uh city kind of this being the dividing line i've never been to charlotte but apparently that's how charlotte is here's san francisco so again you can see a different pattern it's a little more integrated in parts and also it's much more dense so you can see that the colors are much more striking as it's much more dense uh dense city and then if you're interested, here's um, LA. So you can again see you have pockets of uh, diversity or integration. There's a call for city is gonna be like that. This area, this is 2010, by the way, all there's are 2010. So some of these will have actually changed uh, quite a bit. And again, you can see LA has its dense parts, you know, primarily around downtown and, and Koreatown. Um, and then it's less dense parts. Well, it's pretty dense, surprisingly. Okay, I'm gonna take a break there and then we'll go on to the last observations.